All right, guys, welcome back to the channel. So I'm gonna be kicking off a series on GM's E92 AECU. This file that I'm working on is for an LT1. We're gonna go ahead and start by disassembling the file, finding registers, going over how 3D functions handle your maps, and we're gonna find our DTC functions and our PIDs and track those throughout the ECU also. If you're new to reverse engineering, or automotive tuning in general, the methods of reverse engineering are gonna be used to identify the areas within your ECU, which is the computer that controls your engine. Once you find these parameters and understand how your ECU is controlling your engine, you can make modifications for performance or economy. You can create new code functions to have map switching. The options are pretty much endless once you're deep inside the code of the ECU. So. Let's go ahead and get started. So we're gonna go ahead and import this file. Okay, and we are gonna use power ISA. This one right here, so this uh, big Indian BLE EVX with 32-bit addressing. I'm gonna go ahead and hit options and just name this block as ROM. If you don't, Gidra automatically labels it as RAM. Okay, go ahead and double click on it, get it opening up. Uh, we are not gonna analyze. Okay, I did take a quick look at this file already just to find a couple maps and make sure that the uh, video would be cohesive. We're gonna go ahead and just create an array of pointers right here. Okay, and then now you can see that Gidra has gone to work and it started to disassemble uh, what these pointers are pointing to. So the computer is going to get really slow. We're going to have to just hang out for a second and let this thing disassemble. So I'll pause the video and start back up. All right, so the disassembly has stopped. Now we're going to take this right here and we're going to clear this and hit disassemble from this 48. Take note that this 48 right here created a pointer when it was disassembled. So it might be a good idea to search uh, you know, just keep an eye out for these values here. We're going to look in Winnels really quick, and we are going to make sure that our file is synced up and we have xrefs to maps. So this will be the first map we look at right here. Uh, we can check in hex dump. So is how I identified this as a map is I just looked at this uh, bar graph over here. Okay, and I positioned it like this, created my map, uh, and now we're gonna check an XREF to it. Okay, you'll notice that the XREF comes in a couple bytes before at this uh, two and then 5D. Okay, so a sanity check is if we go back to our map here, we'll notice that it is five by 13. So five would be denoting uh, its x, uh, sorry, its y-axis, and d is 13 in decimal. So if we throw this in our calculator, and we set the calculator to programmer, d is equal to a decimal value of 13. This is probably a data type, maybe. Don't know. We'll figure it out later. But this is a five by 13 map. Okay. Look at what X reps it. Okay, inconsequential. Cool, whatever. Uh, let's check this other map really quick. So this one is different. So we're gonna copy that ad address right there. Go into Winnells, paste it. And now on this one, you'll notice that we have an X ref right to the very beginning of the map. Okay, we're gonna copy that and throw it in here so we can get back to it easily. Hit back. Okay, and this is something more significant that I was wanting to show you guys. So we can see where our XREF to the ROM is. UNAF R15 means unidentified R15. 
you'll notice this 5808 right here is what this instruction is doing is subtracting well it's adding five the negative 5808 to r15 and that should be calculating an offset it should create a pointer to a uh, probably a ram address so this is how we find out what registers need to be set within our ecu so we keep an eye out uh, namely you'll notice it first in the decompiler view but sometimes you'll notice that over in the assembly code view you'll actually have a ram address or a pointer identified but it just doesn't show in the decom decompiler view uh, so we'll we'll get into that if we see it but for now we don't see any reference to anything so now we need to figure out how to set up register r15 so this is the type of instruction that we're going to be looking for that's going to be loading a value into r15 so we're going to hit Control shift e and we're going to type in li asterisk r15 oh so we do need to check these boxes right there there's different instructions that can be used to set these registers so like um, sometimes it's just an li asterisk register sometimes it's the lis all right so here's two so these are the ones we're going to use here but it is important to note that fairly often ecus will have two different sets of registers so this instruction it's different this or i however it is assigning a value to r15 i'm not sure exactly why it has two different sets most ecus do but for what we are doing we're going to be using this set of registers so you'll notice that it sets up r30 r28 r13 r2 r14 and r15 i have read on some forums that some of these aren't needed we're probably just going to set up r13 14 and 15. oh you see r3 right here too uh, typically i do set up r2 on power pc but like i said there was a forum that's stating it's not needed so we're just going to have to keep an eye out if we come to a function that has this going on and it is with register two, then we need to come back to our registers function and assign R2. So let's jump into how we do this. First thing I like to do is name this registers. Okay, and we're gonna set a comment and we want this to be a plate comment, I believe. All right, so let's go ahead and calculate R13. So Eliz is loading 4001 into the upper four bytes of R13. So we're gonna grab our calculator and do this calculation. So, so it's loading 4001 into the upper four bytes of R13. Then down here, Subi is subtracting 8000 from R13 and loading it into, again, R13. So we'll go ahead and subtract 8000 and we, get a result of 4,000 and 8,000, okay? So in order to set this register, we're gonna hit Control A, Control R, after we highlight R13 so that it populates, and we're gonna type in 4,000 and 8,000. Okay, we can see that set right here. Now we are gonna take a look at R14, so it's loading 4002 into the upper and it's subtracting 8000 again. We can do that in our head. So 4002 is going to turn into one and then 8000. Okay, and then R15, yep, 4003, so we're gonna, whoops. Control A, Control R, and we are going to type in 4002 and 8000. Sanity check. Okay, I like it. Okay, so let's head back to the function that we were at. Here we go. So here's the map that we were looking at a minute ago, right? And we had all of this you know, addition going on, which were these instructions. Okay, but now they've turned into pointers to RAM addresses. So we should probably create some RAM. This right here is the button that pulls up our memory map and we're going to add a block, call it RAM. 
and we're gonna type in 4,000 thousand and its length is gonna be um, shooting from the hip F F F F plus an F and let's see what that looks like yeah I think that's enough RAM if it's not enough RAM we can add by this if we look up the data sheet on this processor, we can go ahead and split it and then delete um, if we have too much or we want to create IO or whatever. Um, so let's go ahead and click here. All right. So take note that we can see the RAM addresses here in the function. Yet when we go to the location, it is not XREF. And that is because we have not done an analysis. So it's gonna generate a lot of bad code and it's frustrating, but we're gonna go ahead and hit auto analyze. We are gonna come down to this non-returning functions right above references. We're gonna uncheck that box. We're gonna hit apply and we're gonna hit analyze. The analysis is done and we have our X refs now. So you'll notice that we can go ahead and name one of these. Anything you want, it changes here and then any function that references that data point will show the updated name. Okay, we're gonna go ahead and end this video here. In the next video, we'll dig more into this function and how these 3D maps are working through these handlers. We will also dig into our SAE DTCs and our SAE PIDs and start getting some variables named throughout the ECU. Thanks for watching. Hit that like and subscribe and tune in for the next one.